Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about my experiences with Cute Browser. Now, I've wanted to use Cute Browser for some time, but what's really pushed me over the edge into actually giving it a good go is all the shenanigans surrounding Firefox. Now, I've been searching for a, an alternative to Firefox ever since the whole Firefox thing went down. If you wanna know everything that went down, I'll link to it in the video description or the one of the cards above me. But I've been trying to find a alternative. I've not been all that successful. I don't care for Brave. <laughs> I think it's a little bit too pushy for me. It like it just takes over your every and I'll talk about that in another video. Don't get me angry at Brave, Matt. It's gonna be okay. I've tried I tried Chromium, but now Chromium is going to be losing the ability to sync stuff through your Google account, which makes Chromium completely useless because it's the only reason why you'd use Chromium, I believe, and at least in my opinion. So I just decided to go ahead and try Cute Browser. Now I was always a little bit hesitant because I don't want to go through and use my browser completely with a keyboard. Even though I'm a keyboard Vim guy and uh, you know I use a window manager and all that stuff, I'm never I'm pretty much attached to my mouse when it comes to the browser. I like to click things. I like to scroll using the thing. I've I've gotten better at using some Vim bindings in a browser. I've even used a Vim. Uh, plugin for Firefox and Chrome or whatever. So I've gotten better at it, but I, I, it was that knowledge that I would have to use quite a bit more of my, you know, keyboard that always kept me from using Cute Browser. But with all the shenanigans with Firefox going on, I just go ahead and decided to give it a try for a whole week. I was not successful in the whole week. I used it for most of the week, but there are a few things that I just could not, I couldn't stomach using Cute Browser for, and I'll talk about those. So let's, let's actually go ahead and look at Cute Browser. This is Cute Browser, uh, not out of the box. I've done a little bit of customization on it, uh, but not much. One of the things I haven't done is there's a way to go through and convert the, the TOML file, or I think it's a TOML config file, into a Python config file. And then you can do all your configuration via a configuration file instead of using their GUI thing. I have not done that. Uh, I might do that eventually because I want to create some key bindings and stuff, but uh, for now I've just went through and done pretty much used. I've this is pretty much stock Cute Browser. I've done very few customizations on it outside of uh, I, I've I've enabled it so that um, when the uh, when I have pin tabs, if I close Cute Browser, they come back. Uh, that actually might be the only one. For the most part, it's just completely stock. So. Here, let me just go through a few things that I that I like about it. So, I've actually come to like the keyboard focus of it. So I like being able to press the O key and go to YouTube.com. Oops, I actually got to type this right, and just you know do this. I like the whole uh, you know I I like that the keyboard's basically locked into like a Vim style uh, normal mode. Uh, so I can't actually go through and, uh, you know, start typing in something unless I go into insert mode. I kind of like that. It, it keeps me from entering text willy-nilly, you know, you know, or accidentally. Uh, I found that it's actually fairly fast. It's not as fast as Firefox or, or de and definitely not as fast as Chrome, but it's not slow like some of the other, uh, you know, keyboard-driven browsers out there that I've used, like Surf and stuff, because Surf has got awfully slow. It's just really bad, and you got to go through and patch it if you want to do all these things. So it, it you know, it's fairly fast. Um, I, I I do like that. I I also enjoy the UI for the most part. If, if I were going to continue to use it, I would change the text at the top or the font at the top. Uh, I would also probably make those a little bit bigger, or I would make it so that they would go away, you know, completely. Because you can do that. So there's a whole. If you're not using the Python. Uh, config file you can do something called colon set and that will take you to all the um, settings that you can do and there are tons and tons of them they're not very well explained so like um, a lot of the um, ones that like uh, let's see here um, let's see if I can find one let's get out the colors uh, so like, like like a true one of these ones that are, is set true it doesn't tell you what the options really are. You can set it true, and obviously there you could sell it, set it false, but sometimes you have other options like always or um, never or something like that. You know, like this one here, ask. Uh, 
it doesn't tell you what the um, the options are other than ask. So so it's just you know it's kind of guess. It, it will tell you if you put in something that's not an option. So it'll actually come up with like a little like error at the bottom, but you really got to be quick to see it because it just disappears like very quickly. Uh, so that's one of the problems that I had. But like I said, this is very complicated. So I guess I've kind of trans transitioned into the things that I don't like about it, but um, it, I'm not really complaining that it's complicated because I enjoy that there's all these, you know, uh, options. But for, you know, like a new user or whatever, that I could see that this could be very, very complicated and you know, unwieldy. Really, my experience was fairly good as a web browser until, you know, I got uh, into certain situations. So, actually, one last thing. I, I talked about how you're in kind of a Vim normal mode. And I have, uh, like, like I have spreadsheets here that I have open all the time for, for word counts. And I also have, like, a, a, a fanfic fiction, you know, tracker thing. And I edit these things all the time. And one of the things I really like is you can't go through and actually edit any text or anything without going into insert mode. And that's actually proved so that I can actually use Vim keys in Google Docs. And you, I have not been able to find how to do that in any other browser. If for no other reason, I'm going to keep using a uh, cute uh, browser just so I can use Vim key bindings in Google Docs. It's amazing. <laughs> Seriously, it's the best thing ever. Um, that being said, there are several things that are just not great. So... The first thing I will say is that it does not do very good with Zoom, uh, and and by Zoom I don't mean like the the conference call thing. I mean actual Zoom, like zooming in on web pages. Let's say you 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 do a lot of reading, like articles, or um, you know I do stories on fan fiction or whatever. If if you do those things and, and you read something and you have it zoomed in so you can actually read it, so the text isn't so small, you uh, and you then you navigate away from that into a different tab. The zoom goes away, and there's no way to get it to remember the zoom levels for a website. I'm assuming that has some has to do something with cookies. That's just the way it is, and that's unfortunate. Um, it's not a big deal. It's not as big a deal as some of the other things that I found that I don't like, but it's kind of annoying. Uh, the biggest area I had a problem with, and the thing that had me running back to Firefox, was ad blocking. Cute, br cute browser does have ad blocking. It, it it's not good, but it does have it. So if you just if you're talking just uh, like normal Google ads on a website, like a, a blog or something, chances are it'll probably block it. If it's not a Google ad and it's on some a website, it, it may not block it. But that's not a big deal. Where it becomes a big deal actually is going through and watching a YouTube video. YouTube ads are terrible and. <laughs> Even as a YouTuber, I can completely understand if you don't want to watch the ads on my videos. I understand. I don't watch very many ads on videos either. I, I will turn off ad blocker on some creators that I enjoy. But for the most part, like if, if I'm watching a, a YouTuber that has like a billion subscribers or something like that, I'm sorry, Linus Tech Tips, man. I'm turning off the ads on <laughs> the Google ads on your, th on your YouTube channel because I don't want to watch them. And... That's just because I can even do the whole, the beginning, like pre-roll ads. It's when they interrupt the videos, you know, you know what I mean? They're interrupting the videos like every five or 10 seconds or whatever to show me an advertisement. I don't want that. Cute browser completely ignores those videos. The ad blocker, you cannot get rid of ads on YouTube with cute browser, at least not without some hacky hack thing, um, but, you know, creating a key binding or whatever that will take you to actually playing it into MPV or something. Uh, I did not do that. Uh, I just went back and used Firefox. That's that was whenever I wanted to use YouTube, I went to Firefox, and that's just because I hate ads on YouTube. And that's just that's the biggest takeaway I have, you know, on for this this whole experiment is that Cute Browser. I could actually I could use Cute Browser daily. It could be my daily driver. I love the fact that I can use Vim bindings in Google Drive. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I I've come to really enjoy the keyboard navigation of going you know into certain situations where it's just completely keyboard driven. I love it. Even with the extension in Firefox to use Vim key bindings on some things, it's not as seamless as it is here in Key Browser. I love those things. Uh, but they're all all those good things that I could 
hundred percent get behind and use and love are overshadowed by the horribleness of the ad blocking. Now, I know there are other situ solutions, like you could create a pie hole or whatever it's called uh, to, to block advertisements. I'm not going to go through that and do that. I'm just going to find a different browser. That's the thing, is if the ad browsing or the ad blocking was better, I'd use keep browser, but the ad blocking is god awful. Um, some of the other things that I noticed is that sometimes the the like the startup on it is a little laggy. I'm not sure why. I'm pretty sure that this is just my system, or it's possible that it's because I have those pin tabs, and sometimes the uh, those pin tabs take a while to load or something. I don't know. Uh, I didn't notice it before I had the pin tabs, so I'm assuming that that's a problem. Um, it does remember, so it does allow cookies to be saved. So because it remembers your login, even you know, like login if you log into Google or Facebook or whatever, it'll remember that you're logged in. So that's good. I wish it did the same thing for the Zoom. So, but really, so my week with Cute Browser has been mostly positive. If it weren't for the YouTube ad blocking situation, I would be switching to Cute Browser today. It, I would be uninstalling Firefox and using Cute Browser. The ad blocking, man, it's just it's not good. Um, and like I said, I know that as a YouTuber, I should want people to watch ads, but YouTube ads are bad. <laughs> like if, if they, if they could just have good way of doing ads, like just keep them at the beginning, you know, or beginning or the end or whatever. Um, or even better, let the, the creator choose where those interstitial ads are so that they can work it into the content, you know? So if, let me pause here for an advertisement, uh, <laughs> instead of you, I'm halfway through a sentence and all of a sudden you're not actually listening to me anymore. You're listening to an Ikea commercial. It's dumb. And that has nothing to do with, with Cute Browser. It's just that I notice it more with Cute Browser because I have ad blocker on all the time <laughs> for most of the things I use on YouTube. And the fact that it's gone on Cute Browser was very jarring. What I would really wish they would do is find some way to use uBlock Origin. Now, I'm not sure... Is uBlock Origin open source? I feel like it is. Uh, I mean, because it's in LibreWolf, and LibreWolf is open source, so I'm assuming that uBlock Origin is open source, but that might be a wrong assumption. But even then, there has to be an open source ad blocking solution that they could build in. I mean, I understand it's. Pro I, th I think Cute Browser is just one dude that does the, the development of it, so it's probably asking too much. Um, I mean, he's just you know one guy. Uh, so, you know, you can't ask to take this huge, humongous project on, but it would be so good if you could just take an open source ad blocking solution, if you, especially if you block origin is open source, but, or whatever, and build it in. Cute browser would be, so, I mean, a hundred times better. <laughs> It'd be completely usable, uh, and I'd have no problems with it. So, that is my experience with Cute Browser. I'm going to keep it installed simply because of those Vim commands in Google Google Docs. So good, oh, so good. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to stay in Firefox until I find uh, a different solution. I'm probably going to try Vivaldi next. Uh, I've wanted, I've desperately wanted to try something that's not, uh, or the, I I wanted to stay with open source, and Vivaldi is closed source, but. I'm going to give it a try. So anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. In, in the comments below, let me know your experiences with Cute Browser because maybe you found a way that you can block those pesky ad interstitial ads on YouTube in Cute Browser. I would love those. <laughs> I mean, really, seriously, wouldn't it be great? I mean, this is completely, I mean, a complete rant. But I would, I, I've ranted like four or five times in this video about ads on YouTube. Really what I would love to do is be able to watch the ads at the beginning and skip the ones that are in the center. <laughs> so we need an ad blocker that allows you to do that because then I can support the creators that I watch without having to watch those crappy interstitial ads. Anyways, that is it. Give us a subscribe. Give us a like. All that stuff. Uh, Patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.